do our roll call. Porto Maldonado, Tom Zip here. Manuel Dissan, present. Manuel Dissan, present. And player Mike is not here this evening. We have citizen participation. We have Jerry Parker. It's the floor is open to you. You know what you want to talk to us about? Okay. Yes, sir. He didn't say it out loud. Yes, yeah. yeah, for everybody to hear.
I'm sorry. <laughs> But anyway, hopefully they can work something out with you. Yeah, well, I like work something out because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to retire, you know, this year. I'm dying, you know. I'm tired. You know, I'm only about 14 years old. All right. You know? Well, we do appreciate you bringing it to our attention. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. So have a good day. God bless you all. Thank you. Likewise. And we don't have anybody at all that for our citizens' comments. You know, We've got under the general consent agenda, uh, we've got number one is approval of the city council meeting minutes from September 21, 2023. Number two is approval of the previous month's bills, paid, and financial reports. Number three is the approval of the investment report for the prior quarter. Do I have anybody want to make a motion on that? I'll make a motion to approve the consent and the items. Do I have a second? Board page a second. I noticed that we got the corrections taken care of. There was some corrections that were corrected, right? And that's why we had a transfer. Okay. So everybody in favor? I have to abstain because I will be last month. Okay. So, Manual abstained. Everybody else is there. Which is favor? Motion is passed. Was there any questions at all on any of that or not? Oh, we passed it already. Okay. We approved the three together with the report. One, two, and three. Yeah, one, two, and three we approve. So. The next item is item number four is discuss and possible action regarding ordinance 1019-2023-1 approving the 2023 annual service plan update to the service and assessment plan including the assessment role for the Hickory Ridge Public Improvement <coughs> District in accordance with Chapter 372, Texas Local Government Code. And we have, I guess, Kirk McDaniels is here from T3, and he's going to advise us or inform us of what's going on through the herds and the kids. So, Good evening, Council. Thank you for your time. Uh, my name is Kirk McDaniels, T3 Works, and we serve as the updated service administrator for the city. Um, the item before you now is just a standard item that's required to be updated under the statute, Chapter 3, uh, me, Chapter 372, Local Government Code. So, uh, council previously entered into the development agreement, previously approved the PID um, for the three years development. Every year, you're required to approve a service assessment plan update, and so this is this year's service assessment plan update. So, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Is there any changes from the previous years, or is it just more of a not update that you're doing? The, the main piece that changes is the assessment role, which is the bill that's actually going to go out to those property owners with the bid. And so that gets updated each year. But it stays relatively the same um, as the previous years. Does anybody else have any concerns or comments? Or? It is a lot to read. I know that. <laughs> you have to have it to keep things legal. So. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I make a. Motion for ordinance 10-19-2023, the approving of the 2023 annual service plan updating to the service and assessment plan, including the assessment role for the Hickory Ridge Public Improvement District. Do I have a second? Second. All those done the second, do I have a vote in favor? Five oh. Thank you, sir. That one has passed. 
and item number five is the other item that you were involved with as well from what I understand and it's the discussion possible action regarding resolution 10-19-2023-1R approving of the 2023 tax increment reinvestment zone report for reinvestment zone number three city of Elmendorf, Texas making certain findings providing a severability call and providing for an effective date. And the turds is one thing, but the pit is the public improvement part, right? That's the, the parks and everything else that they're trying to do. There are two different uh, special districts. So the pit uh, involves an assessment that's levied on the property to find public infrastructure. In this case, the turds is primarily over the same boundary. It also includes the commercial aspect of the interior development. So it's a little bit larger than just the pit boundary. Um, but it's another tool to help reimburse the developer for that public infrastructure that they'll be putting in. And is that an additional cost that goes to every home buyer? No, uh, I, I have a brief presentation that I can provide on churches and how they work. Uh, I know it's been some time since I've just heard about the church. Um, so I can kind of go into that about our other few as far as council. Um, you all should have a printed copy. We do. I passed one out. We're, we're actually the presentation. We are good with it, and I appreciate it anybody is interested. The only question <clears throat> I had was, I was on the TERS 3 board way back. Yes. All right, is this the same thing? Same thing. We didn't abolish it and then just rename it? No. Okay. No, no. You were part of the TERS 3 board when it was first, uh, when it was first created. And then I believe you have to be replaced because you got on council. So it, in the but it's the same board. board. Yeah. And I do want to answer your, your question, Council Member. Uh, uh, the way the church works is it's an allocation of the property tax dollars, city property tax dollars that the residents are going to pay. And so it's taking a portion of those tax dollars that those residents and pay and allocates it to the church. Yes, yes, sir. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Just to hear it out loud, it says by the time of the council meeting, this report should have been accepted by the church number three board. So has it been accepted? Yes, ma'am. So the church board met earlier tonight and they approved and they approved and they recommended approval to the city council of this 2022 report. Does anybody have anything else? Thank you, Mr. McDaniels. We'll Thank you, sir. Go ahead and we'll vote on this one as well. Do I have a motion for item number five? I make a motion for resolution 10-19-20 IR approving a 2023 tax increment reinvestment zone report for reinvestment zone number three. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Okay, all of me second. Those in favor? 5 old that one has passed. Thank you, guys. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, good evening, sir. You as well. <clears throat> we have item number six is discussing possible action regarding the quest by Samantha Angel Ramos for the conditional use review of property located in the single family residential district R1. The legal district description is 16656 Barangas Road in the city of Elmendorf, Texas. Property ID number 1349852. And we had the, the zoning board meet on this one, right? Yes. yes. What were their recommendations? We recommend that you approve the um, request. Is that the one I was not allowed to talk to? Yeah, that was the next one. No, that was the next one. But I bet he would have told you this. I would have. He would have. <laughs> was there? What was the decision that they made? It was to leave it as is and allow a variance, or? Yeah, but it's, 
part of uh, the, the the zoning code was to is to allow for a conditional use. No. It basically uh, doesn't change the zoning, which the zoning in this case is R1 residential. It doesn't change the zoning, but allows you the ability to grant uh, almost essentially a variance for conditional use for this property to be used for a manufactured home. Okay, and they're here, right? They are. They are. Have you all got anything you want to say, or? No, other than I just really need a home for okay. me and my children. Um, I'm a single mom, so it would really help if I can. Because okay. I cannot afford to actually build a home, which is what they're asking for right now. So okay. if I can go the other way, it would help me out a lot. So this is strictly yeah. for your, your uh, personal use for my, home. For, my, um, for her residence. For right. her residence. Tell what y'all told us. Yeah. Tell us more. It's yeah. all it's it's it always a rural area. Like it started off rural. There's no one really around. There is mobile homes in the area, but I will not be the only one. I am also really far from the road, so she's waiting for the better. It shouldn't be also like it shouldn't be a bother to anybody else. No one will hear this from the property. Yeah. We didn't receive any, any objections or anything from neighbors around them? No objection. Okay, so we're good. I, I want her to tell y'all how she got her property. Okay, my father, my father-in-law passed away, Marcus Tor. He passed away, and the kids inherited <coughs> two children. My husband is Samuel Ray Tobar. So my husband got five acres. We, um, instead of us keeping the land, we gave it to our five children. So she, we gave her the back because the boys wanted the front. They said, we keep her in the back, we'll keep her safe. She's in the back of the ranch. Okay. So that's the reason we gave her way back there. Otherwise, she would have been in the front over here with me. Yeah, and I know that access to the property is very narrow it's at very the front. Narrow. So. Yeah. But it is an inheritance. But it is an inheritance from my and, it, and is it plotted? Uh, yeah, we it need to broke it down to five different it's, it's divided into only three kids. So we couldn't do all five of them. So she got two and a half acres. One of the boys got an acre and the other boy got an acre. But they're, they're right in back of me. But like I said, she's, they put her in the back because she was a girl. Of course. <laughs> and they had come to us before they get to you. So. Does anybody have a garden? garden. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions or? Do I have a motion? I'd like to make a motion to approve okay. to make the request by Samantha Angel Ramos for conditional use review of a property located in the single family residential district, R1, the legal, legal description is 16656 Borregas Road in the city of Alamador, Texas. Property ID 1349852. I'll make a second. Manual is made the second. Do I have a vote in favor of our council? Here we go. You're good to go. Just keep working with the, the guys up here. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Yeah, it's on. Good luck. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Yeah. Good luck. Thank you for giving me my house back. <laughs> <laughs> it, it I wasn't, your pain. It wasn't my house. <laughs> yes. I'm happy for you, ma'am. I really am. So. There's not much left on that road to develop. Most of it's sold off you now. So. Very few people are property available. With that, we'll move on to item number seven. It's discuss and possible action regarding the quest of the Height Family Investment LLC for the conditional use review of properties located in the heavy industrial and manufacturing district M2. The legal descriptions are as follows 7704 East, Loop 1604 South, property ID. 159486 and 7698 East Loop 1604 property ID 159487 in the city of Elmendorf, Texas. And this is another one that went through our review board as well. So. Yes, and we also um, um, voted, agreed to recommend approving them. Okay. And see 
Mr. Like we said, we, we heard maybe there was one objection from somebody outside the city. Oh, yes. Yeah, that was correct. Um, so we didn't have any other objections outside of that? As far as those, uh, I do have a question now and I can ask it. <laughs> I know you're looking at turning it into like an adult daycare or a daycare itself. Yes. It looks like like a, a daycare and adult daycare. So there's seven, there's two buildings. That's that's my question. It's where the old ostrich plant used to be. Back oh, there. Yeah. two big yes. buildings. Uh, back I, there. I don't. I don't think we know that. I think that the the, day, the daycare, unless they, there's not enough to do a daycare enough. Business and then they'll do it. Right. I, think, I don't think we know that. So if you grant it, you grant it to them to do whatever. See, that's they that's my feel best. Is and, and, and not not in a bad way, but through experience, um, I've seen a lot of small cities that have granted approvals, and, and honestly, I don't think I've ever seen a, a, a one turn out to be good because of the lack of regulations. And, and control and pretty much health and welfare and I've not ever seen one turn out to be a good one. And I've already seen at least four or five in different small cities that have grants that and then it comes back and bites them. Are there, there safe guidelines when it comes mm -hmm. to assisted care and nursing homes that kind of stuff? There is. There is. There is, but it's up to the state to do it. So, you know, the city of Elmendorf doesn't have any type of business licensing uh, uh, ordinances or really any teeth to monitor and oversee it because we have no regular, the city mm -hmm. has no regulations over the operation of a uh, daycare or anything else. So it would default to the state who. I mean, my understanding of how it works is they do they do regular checks and, and audits of these things uh, and answer any complaints that come up. But but Manuel's right. I mean, the city wouldn't have really involvement in it because we don't have the, the ordinances to control. Could we table this and have them come and talk to us? That's up to you. We don't have anybody. They were told There's nobody about here to meetings. represent them right now to give us direction. I can second no. that one. The, <clears throat> you make it a one. The, the other thing I was thinking about too, doesn't the, the county medical director have some say so or not? The health department? I don't know. I mean, within, within the city limits? I know Probably we've, not we've we agreed have. to, you know, the city has Let's agreed agree. to take the county's appointed person in the medical field as far as things go, but can we use their office to help guide us or something? Yeah. I, don't I mean, I know what you're talking about. That doesn't apply to this type of situation. Mm -hmm. okay. I don't know if we could contract with the county. That's what we had to do if we wanted to use their services. And I, I honestly don't even know if they have that for this for daycare. Mm -hmm. I do know that you know, daycares are regulated and so are adults in the part of the state. You have to have certifications and licenses and all that kind of stuff. But, uh, but they have very few staff to be able to follow rules a lot of these. And, and that's where the limit is. And for one, if, if they really wanted to present it in such a strong case, it would have been here. That's my. Was it? Was, did you have anybody representing? No, no, we nobody could have. And, and actually, we, we did have one nay vote on the uh, planning and zoning, and that was the reason, because they're not here. Um, the other things we discussed that we all agree on is there is a need in our area for child care and adult care. Oh, no doubt. Yeah, there is a need. There is. And, and, and that's not, I'm not trying to take that away. Right. I've just, it's the experience that, that I actually. Like I said, hands-on experience, it's not just, you know, say so, and where I've actually seen it in smaller cities. And, and I just don't want that to come back. And once it, it gets lost, uh, they'll come in and slap their hands, and that's about it, and then they're gone again. Do we so, have so. other ordinances that we need to be looking towards for that kind of business? Not we could, but we'd have to, you have to be more staff, you know. That's exactly what I was going to say. Yeah, and they would have to be specially trained for that. Right. To do that. That's the problem. I just wondered if we had to have ordinances in place 
to oversee something like that rather than just the state alone? And we don't have to. I mean, we could. As Cody said, we could give business licenses and things along that line. But that would require quite a bit more staff. Uh, the other thing in the letter um, they sent that I read was that they have six other businesses, five of them in San Antonio and one in Pleasanton. And they're all daycares. Yeah, the other mm -hmm. nuance about this one that Cody talked about last time is this piece of property would have, this would have been approved without having to come to the PNC or the council, but they moved it from commercial, because this is an allowed use of commercial, that it would not have to come here. They moved it to M2, the last purchaser did because they were going to do some manufacturing on that property. So if it, if it would have maintained the old zoning or the old zoning designation, they wouldn't even have to come to council. Right, right. Well, there's a reason it happened. Well, but you can look at it, yeah. That's what it looks like. Well, actually, if anything bad happens there, if they do have the adult or the child care, it's up to the state to regulate everything for them. The city has nothing to do with it. That's so therefore, fine. you know, with the city needing something like that, you're just opening the doors to those who really need that type of care. And I mean, nothing's gonna fall back on the city. All you're doing is permitting them to have something in the city that is available to citizens. Right. And, and again, I understand that and where that falls in place is, I look at the long-term, how is it gonna affect the people who are there? If they don't meet the requirements, how is it gonna affect their families and, and so on and so on. Like I said, it's just, it's just that I've had a bad taste because I've seen that. I think Is there any way we can get history on these people? I, I'm not. I mean, because you've got. I, I know they have locations in San Antonio. Could we have any way of looking into that to see if there's been any complaints or to be issues? The, uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah. Because we, we, I, I would hate for us to bring somebody in and say, "Okay, we're trying to work with you," and then find out these aren't the people that should have been here to begin with. You know. Although that I, I don't know anything about them. Is what my thing is. I'd like you know somebody you know standing up for them, you know themselves as well as you know. Do they have recommendations from San Antonio, or do they have recommendations from Pleasanton where they're already at? So you know, based on that, that would help us too in our decision making. So we, we don't want to adopt a problem child. Then again, I thought the whole thing on the table was: Are we going to allow? A commercial operation in a manufacturing code zone. That's what's in front of us. It's not whether they're going to operate a good business or a bad business. And I don't know that, it, like Cody said, unless we get a lot more staff and pay a lot more money, it's not up to the city to go enforce this. There's there's already agencies in place for that. Right. And so that question, if you have that question, you're going to have that question to anybody that comes in here. And then the next thing we know, we have all these new families with little kids that want a daycare readily available. And I understand somebody mentioned the closest one is down at Foster Road. Right. So if I have, if I'm a young family looking to buy in the area and buy a home, and I look around and there's no daycare, or maybe I have, you know, someone that needs adult daycare, which I work with someone that needs an adult daycare fit has a brother that needs that, and looking around in the community, oh, they don't have that, they don't care enough about little kids, then why am I gonna live here? I, I, I can look at it that I, way too. I, I can say that we're not against it. We know we want it, we need it, we don't that. But I, I honor representation. Mm -hmm. If you come and, and stand right there and say what you want, what you need, and it, that's representation. That's true. It, it's not just thrown to us and see what we provide. See if it sticks and I go along with you. If you want to piece of this, I'm upset. Okay. Sir? Well, and okay. may I see it? I mean, okay. So what's it going to hurt if we wait a little bit longer? Okay, this is, this is new to us, too. If there's an adult daycare or child care, of course, that would be wonderful. We want a good one, yet that's not on us, like you said, it's the state. But we can hold off and do our homework and think about it and then we'll just 
and it's not going to hurt. Just take it and do something. Informed decision more than just here it is. Yeah, because then, I mean, you know, at least we made an informed decision yesterday. So do I have a motion to table it? Yeah. I make a motion to table it. Yeah. Yeah. Make a motion to table it. So go in. So we can get a little bit of information and hopefully Cody can help with that. But I mean, it's November meeting. Do you, uh, yeah. do you wanna do you wanna stipulate that it's tabled yeah. until the the there will come here will right. be able to appear and answer questions like that? Yeah, on a council. You know, right. They can get in front of you preliminary with wise whatever, and maybe there's some Things they can answer right away. It's made with motion. So we can okay. okay. even ask them to bring copies of their state inspections on their other on their right. Other so the let's table it until so they're able to show up and represent themselves. Right. Okay. And who's going to second it? I okay. Paulo seconded. Do I have a vote in favor by the council? Do the table this item? It's five old table. <clears throat> Item number eight is discussed in possible action regarding the proposed Texas pollutant discharge elimination system. <coughs> Permit number WQ 0054360000. This item is specifically reserved for closed session of Texas Department. Or Texas Government Code Section 551-071, consultation with the term. We need to make a motion to adjourn. We have to go into a closed session. You, you can, or we can. Or we, but we have two closed sessions, so we'll make a motion to Yeah, I was going to say. And the, the other motion, I'll just drop that down to nine or whatever. I've been asked that if we could table that until the mayor can be here. So, and that's that's just out of consideration for him and for Cody and them to get their ducks in a row. Okay. So I make a motion to go into closed session for item number eight. Okay. So what time is it? Is it? I second it. You can take it. What time do you have, Linda? Seven thirty-nine. Seven thirty-nine.